welcome as we gather on this Maundy Thursday to remember, to celebrate the life of Jesus and the last meal that he shared with his disciples, those close to him. We will be sharing the Sacrament of Communion during this service. If you did not receive a communion cup as you came in, um, just indicate that and an usher can bring you one. Uh, but we will be having communion at the end of the service um, and everyone is welcome to partake. So let us then on this most holy night gather and turn our hearts and our minds to God in worship. Let us do the call to worship. Come into the presence of Christ, for he is making us ready for holiness. Come into presence of community, for together we lift one another into faithfulness. In humility and trust, we come to be made into Christ's body. And now the opening prayer. You love us to the end and beyond, O God. You give yourself to us beyond our comprehension. We cannot fathom the depth of your love nor the cost of your gift. Yet we see the path you walk and the way you choose. You break down nine walls and social norms and power. With nothing but a basin and a towel gathering all your people into your holy presence. Make us free to follow your example to create a community of mutual care that transforms the world. Amen. Be seated. The historical witness this evening comes from the 13th chapter of John. We have been traveling through the Gospel of John uh, during this Lenten season, and now we 
take a step back from where we were on Sunday to chapter 13, as Jesus gathers with his disciples. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God remains forever. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations in our hearts and minds on this holy evening be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength, O God, and our Redeemer. Amen. When I was a child, I spent most summer days running around our yard barefoot. I stepped on more than one bee hovering over the clover in our yard. I managed to navigate our gravel driveway just fine in my bare feet. At most in the summer, I might have worn a pair of very thin flip-flops, but most of the time I was barefoot. Oh, somebody else here I can tell also. Most of the time I was barefoot. That meant that most evenings, before I was allowed to crawl into my bed, my, oh, she knows what's coming, my mother hoisted me up onto the counter in the bathroom, stuck my feet in the sink, and washed them. We had a nice big double sink counter, and I was set up there, my feet went in the sink, and my feet were washed before I was allowed to crawl into bed at night. It was a very practical move on my mother's part. Foot washing in ancient times was very practical as well. Roads were dirt. They were dirty, dusty. Feet were exposed, covered only by open sandals, if that. People walked everywhere. Foot washing was a common ritual when you entered someone's home. It was an act of hospitality. The host would have water available when you entered their house, you might wash your own feet, or if they were a little more well-to-do, they might have a servant there to wash your feet for you. 
the host would not wash your feet. You would do it yourself or a servant would do it. The host would not wash feet. We gather tonight to remember that last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. And in John, that includes foot washing. It does not include what we've come to know as the words of institution for our sacrament of communion. This is my body. This is my blood. That's not in John's version. Those are found in the other Gospels. In the other Gospels, this meal takes place on Passover. But here in John, it takes place on the night before, the evening of the day of preparation for the Passover. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them to the end. What a beautiful statement that is. Having loved his own who were in the world, who are his own? To whom does this refer? Who are his own? The disciples, to be sure, but more than that, humanity, us. Jesus came from God and was going to God. He came from God to live as a human being on this earth. He was one of us. We are his own, humanity. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He loved them fully, completely, throughout his life until he took his last breath. Jesus was the embodiment of love, love incarnate. Having loved humanity fully, completely, Jesus loved them to the end. The end was coming. The end was coming. Time was running out for Jesus, and he needed to make sure he got through to his disciples because they were going to have to go it on their own without him. He had to make sure he got through to his disciples. If you knew you didn't have long to live, what words of wisdom or advice would you want to share with your loved ones? When my sister was nearing the end of her struggle with ovarian cancer, her daughter, her youngest child, was expecting her first child. It became very clear that Linda would not make it to see Greta born. So at some point, and I found this out later, but at some point, my niece asked her mom, what advice would you give for parenting? What advice would you leave me with for parenting? And then later, much to the dismay of her father, she had some of that advice tattooed onto her forearm. She didn't tell him for a while. Patience and kindness. Tattooed onto her forearm. Patience and kindness. What word did Jesus want to make sure to leave with his disciples? What word did he want them to tattoo on their hearts? Love. Love. Jesus needs to get through to his followers. He doesn't have much time. So he doesn't use only words to convey his message. Oh, he uses words. He uses words to be sure, because chapters 13 to 17 are words Jesus shares with his disciples before he is killed. These words are known as his farewell discourse. But Jesus begins that discourse in chapter 13 with another sign, with an action. During supper, Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' 
feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Jesus just pulled a major role shift here, folks. A major character change from host to servant. Countercultural Jesus is at it again. Hosts did not wash the feet of their guests. Teachers did not wash the feet of their students. Jesus is defying the social norms. And Peter can't handle it. Peter is well aware of social hierarchies, well aware of his place, and we really can't blame him for that. So when Jesus gets to Peter, perhaps after he's already washed the feet of Judas, the one who would betray him, when Jesus gets to Peter, Peter says, Lord, you will never wash my feet. Lord, Peter knows his place. He doesn't seem to understand that Jesus has been turning tables on the way the world works, and he's still doing it. I think we understand Peter, don't we? I think a lot of us would be pretty uncomfortable with having our feet washed, especially by Jesus. I know churches that actually sometimes do a foot washing on this evening. Most people don't like it. They don't want to come in and have someone else kneel in front of them and wash their feet unless they've paid for a pedicure. No, no. We understand, Peter. We're more comfortable being on the giving end the serving end than the receiving end. Receiving an act of love like this makes you vulnerable. We have more of a sense of control if we're the ones giving, if we're the ones serving. We are the privileged. We are used to giving. Being on the receiving end is hard for many of us. Yet just before this reading, Jesus was on the receiving end. When Mary anointed his feet with expensive perfume and wiped them with her hair. Jesus knew how to receive love. Jesus knew how to give love. Jesus loved fully, completely. Jesus answers Peter's protest. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. That is, if you reject my action, you reject me. Unless you understand that in my kingdom things look vastly different than in this world, you can't be a part of it. I think that's something we need to hear and think about. Unless you understand that in my kingdom things look vastly different than in this world, you can't be a part of it. I've always loved Peter. I've got a soft spot in my heart for Peter. Impetuous Peter. Peter says what is on his mind. Peter speaks before he thinks things through. And so Peter, who just said, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet, when when he hears Jesus Response, suddenly he's all in. Lord, not just my feet, my hands, my head, too. And honestly, this is where I see Jesus just rolling his eyes or doing the face palm and going, you just don't get it, do you? You really just don't get it. It's not bath time. With a towel around his waist, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. All of them. Judas, the one who would betray him. Peter, the one who would deny him. He loved them 
fully, completely, to the very end, to his last breath, he never stopped loving. Could you perform such an act of love for someone who had betrayed you? Someone who had hurt you? Someone who had deserted you, abandoned you? Could you perform such an act of love? Jesus moves back into the role of host. He puts on his robe and returns to the table, and he begins to unpack the sign. Do you know what I have done to you? Do you get it? Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right. That's what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. And in case they're still not getting it, in verses 34 and 35, Jesus states it quite plainly. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world. His disciples would have to carry on in his name. So he gives them the commandment to love. And then he shows them again one more time what love looks like. It's our turn now. It's our turn to show the world that we are disciples of Jesus. Are you willing to humble yourself to love in a way that puts you on your knees at the feet of another? Are you willing to let go of this world's social hierarchy? Are you willing to humble yourself and make yourself vulnerable enough to allow yourself to receive that kind of love from another? When Jesus knew that his time on this earth was very short, the one who had loved fully and completely showed his disciples one more time what love looks like. Then he gave them, gave us this commandment. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Fully, completely, in word, and indeed, so be it. Amen. May you remain seated as we sing our hymn of preparation. Let us break bread together.
invite you to stand if you are comfortably able for our closing hymn. be seated. I remind you that tomorrow you have an opportunity to come here between the hours of noon and three and again at seven to eight in the evening to spend some time in prayer and meditation over the last words of Christ on the cross. There will be a devotional guide with reflection and prayers for you to follow. There will be pictures, and we invite you to come as long as you want, when you can, for prayer and meditation on this most sacred day. Jesus gave us a commandment in words and in example to love as he loved, fully, completely, to the very end. Go forth now to love. Go forth to contemplate and to reflect on that amazing grace, on that unconditional love of our God. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.